To you I call, you will, you will surely hear me, O oh God. Turn your ear to me, hear my words. Guard me as the apple of your eye, in the shadow of your wings, protect me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Very welcome to Mass today on the 29th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. You come in word and in sacrament to strengthen us and make us holy. Christ, have mercy. You will come again in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to the people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only God the Son. Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Holy you alone are the most high Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of our Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours, and serve you in sincerity of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Lord has been pleased to crush his servant who is suffering. If he offers life in atonement, he shall see his heirs. He shall have a long life, and through him what the Lord wishes will be done. His soul's anguish over, he shall see the light and be content. By his suffering shall my servant justify many taking their faults on himself. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May your love be upon us, O Lord, as we place all our hope in you. May your love be upon us, O Lord, as we place all our hope in you. 
The word of the Lord is faithful and all his works to be trusted. The Lord loves justice and right and fills the earth with his love. The Lord looks on those who revere him, on those who hope in his love, to rescue their souls from death, to keep them alive in famine. Our soul is waiting for the Lord. The Lord is our help and our shield. May your love be upon us, O Lord, as we place all our hope in you. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Since in Jesus, the Son of God, we have the supreme high priest who has gone through to the highest heaven, we must never let go of the faith that we have professed. For it is not as if we had a high priest who was incapable of feeling our weaknesses with us, but we have one who has been tempted in every way that we are, though he is without sin. Let us be confident then in approaching the throne of grace that we shall have mercy from him and find grace when we are in need of help. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the way, the truth, and the life, says the Lord. No one can come to the Father except through me. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, approached Jesus. Master, they said to him, we want you to do us a favor. He said to them, what do you want me to do for you? They said to him, allow us to sit one at your right hand and the other at your left in your glory. You do not know what you're asking, Jesus said to them. Can you drink the cup that I must drink or be baptized with the baptism with which I must be baptized? They replied, we can. Jesus said to them, the cup that I must drink, you shall drink, and with the baptism with which I must be baptized, you shall be baptized. But as for seats at my right hand and my left, these are not mine to grant. They belong to those to whom they've been allotted. When the other ten apostles heard this, they began to feel indignant with James and John. So Jesus called them to him and said to them, you know that among the pagans their so-called rulers lord it over them, and their great men make their authority felt. This is not to happen among you. No, anyone who wants to become great among you must be your servant, and anyone who wants to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man himself did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. There's always a moral in those little fables, Aesop's fables, and here's one of them. A wolf roaming by the mountainside saw his own shadow as the sun was setting become greatly extended and magnified, so he said to himself, why should I, being of such an immense size and extending nearly an acre in length, be afraid of the lion? Ought I not to be acknowledged as king of all the collected beasts? While he was indulging in these proud thoughts, a lion fell upon him and killed him. He exclaimed with too late a repentance, wretched me! This overestimation of myself is the cause of my downfall. Now, James and John seem to be suffering with the same problem when they started to beg Jesus to give them the best seats in heaven. 
The other apostles understandably felt irate at the pushiness of the two brothers. And of course this provided Jesus with an ideal opportunity for teaching them all a very important lesson. They must avoid, he said, the power games that people play in the world. If you remember at the Last Supper, what did Jesus do before he instituted the Eucharist? Well, he put them all sitting down and he washed all the apostles' feet. A very humble thing to do because only a servant would wash people's feet. But Jesus was giving them an example. And then he said, you ought to do the same. Wash each other's feet. But Peter refused to have his feet washed. And Jesus told him bluntly that if he didn't wash his feet, that was the end of their relationship. Today is sometimes designated as Mission Sunday. Jesus sent out the apostles on a mission to preach the gospel. But their words will only resonate with people who have the same spirit of humbleness as Jesus, who did not come to be served, but to serve. And I think the only time Jesus asked us to learn of him was when he said, learn of me, for I am meek and humble in heart. And if we learned that lesson, I think we'd have learned the whole gospel. James and John, they weren't very humble, were they? They were pressing Jesus to reserve seats for them at the top table in heaven without having to muddy their hands, as it were, here on earth. Now, humble service of others involves taking on a more unassuming role which doesn't come naturally to most people. We'd prefer to be served than to serve. That's kind of part and parcel of our fallen human nature. However, let us look at ourselves at the moment. Without fully realizing it, maybe, most of us take our responsibilities towards others in our stride without much song or dance. Look at the unpretentious, often unnoticed tasks you do week after week, both within your family and outside your family, without seeking any reward, without looking for the best seats in the synagogue or the best places in heaven. And I think during the pandemic, we saw the country really rise to the occasion of putting today's gospel into practice. We think of the NHS, all the times we sang for them, and they did really give of themselves, and we have to always recognize it, and you did as well. So you are, even despite the high standards passed on to us in today's gospel, you have been fulfilling it. Even the church has not been immune, however, for, from playing power games. At a clergy some time back, a clergy conference some time back, one of the items under discussion was about how the church had changed since the Second Vatican Council over 50 years ago. Well, I would say we are more chastened. Maybe our sins have brought us down a bit, and no harm in that. We are brought down a peg or two. And in itself, even though in an inverted way, that's a good thing. More chastened, less triumphalist. The church, the church now uh, than in the past, uh, it's more in line with the ordinary man and woman in the street. And I think this synodal process is going to bring out that more and more, that we're walking more with the people. Somebody said, don't walk ahead of me, I may not follow. Don't walk behind me, I may not lead. Walk beside me, be my friend. That's what it's all about. If you remember a couple of years ago, or maybe four or five years ago now, uh, Pope Francis, when he went to South America, he, he drove around in a little small white car. And he was really basically saying, I'm one of you. 
Service towards others, however, doesn't at all mean devaluing or downplaying your talents. You have been given talents by the Lord. Each of us have different talents, by the way. But some people never discover theirs for some reason or other. But you have a talent, and it could be a very small little talent, but however, a very important one. But humility is not downplaying that. That's false humility. Missionary activity, however, always involves the humiliation of the cross. That is why Jesus asked the two, James and John, where they prepared to take on the cross, and they said, we can. Uh, where they prepared to drink the cup of suffering and humiliation, which he himself, of course, was soon to drink. If not, they might be merely on a nago trip and overlook the real needs of the people to whom they were called to serve. Now we do know, and Jesus said it in the Gospel today, that worldly leaders tend to push their weight around. But Jesus, but we, his followers, are advised not to go down that road. Otherwise, our mission to spread the Gospel in our ordinary everyday lives will all but fail.
our nationalistic self-interest alone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray that the church be open to the Spirit's guidance as the people of God deliberate over the year or so on making it more snow and nature in line with the Holy Father's vision for the future. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. We pray for the people who are ill, especially those whose treatment has been postponed due to COVID-19. May the backlog be soon clear so their lives can be a sense of semblance of the normality. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the recently deceased, especially severe illness and pity, whose life was so cruelly cut short by an act of violence recently. And those who know us which we recall today and the week ahead, may they inherit eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray to Mary, the Holy Family of the Lord. Hail Mary, Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. Grant us, Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy. Through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word, through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Saviour and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory, as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, 
heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith we proclaim. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Ralph our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. 
May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The Son of Man has come to give his life as a ransom for many. Body of Christ.
Go now in the peace of Christ. Amen. Amen.